Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, it's Poetry Month. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're talking about Poetry Month. So April is Poetry Month. And I'd like to talk about some apps. Now, some of these apps are apps I've talked about before. Some of them are new ones. So let's look at a few. First of all, if you want kids to enjoy poetry, look for their own poetry. Poetry Foundation app is fantastic. It allows you to find new poetry or look for poetry by author or topic. In this case, we have these two bars that allow us to look for specific apps, for example, humor and youth. And here are some poems that come up as we do that. And if we press on one of them, we actually get the text of the poem. We can play with the size of the text for the poem. And we can also find out something about the biography of the poet. So you can see that there's an actual but short biography. There's a photo, in this case, a painting of the poet. So kids and adults can get a little bit more information about the poet. There are also poems that actually have been read by the poet, uh, him or herself, and those will be available and you can listen to those being read. So it's a great way to get access to new poetry, search around and find things that you find useful. Another thing that you can do, which is great, is you can make things favorite. So if we go back to the poem, we can make it one of our favorites and kids or adults or for the classroom we can create a collection of our favorite poems and then uh, access it through the favorite file so you can see that there's a series of poems I've marked and I've created in effect my own collection. So this is Poetry Foundation and they have an equivalent engine online I actually like the app better but you can find this on their website as well. Uh, there are a few apps that do fridge poems and this is the newest one. It's called naturally fridge poems and what it gives you is actually gives you a red uh, door of a fridge where you can create your own poem and you log in you see the words that I've collected. If you want more words, you can see that if you minimize or if you just move around, you can find other words that are there, including, and I love this, it has some endings, so you can change watch to watching, right? And you can rearrange the poem, so you can go back here and create all of this. And now I have a poem. Well, let me finish this just like that and I can take a picture and now this poem will be saved or you can share it through Facebook, you can text it to somebody, you can email it or you can just make it a photo on uh, your uh, photo roll. So this is called Fridge Poems, a great way to quickly create poetry on Poetry Month. Two more poetry creations. One is called Textagon and in Textagon what you do is you enter text and it creates poetry. So you can see this is a poem I started creating and the size of the text is determined just its uniform width and then the words become longer, uh, bigger or smaller depending on how many characters are on that line. So you can see um, I've started something here So you can see that I can create and the more words I have per line the more they're going to show. So it's easy to create poetry, it's very visually pleasing and you can then share it on your iPad, so messaging, mail, Twitter and Facebook and you can also, and this is again very very important, you can just save it as an image and then share it in any other way that images are shared. So this one is called Textagon. And another way to create poetry, which is a, I think very exciting, is Visual Poet. And in Visual Poet what you do is you add visuals to every piece of your text. In this case 
I created this uh, poem and used photos that I found online. So here, what you do in visual poet is really combine the text and the visuals together to create something new. And the way you do that is, let's just create, if you want to uh, look at the title, you can double tap, or sorry, tap to start writing. This will be, um, let's call this, I don't know, limitless. And now we can add an image. And you see, you, you can search from multiple sources when you get an image. You can get it from Tumblr, from Flickr, from Google, or from your own library. So you can choose one of the photos you took, or one of the photos you saved from another source, even one of your poems, if you really want it to be multi-textual. So let's, let's actually look at our library. Um, we'll let it look at our poems. And I actually like this one. And this is a sample image from another program. And you can see that you can actually choose which part of the photo will come in. And because it is a square, you can see where it is. And I double tap, and now it shows up. And this is where it is. And just to go back, since we're inside our notebook, we just turn it. And you can see that this shows up here. So you've started. Now you can start creating text. So you can actually get a new image. Let's say I want to this time look for something from Google and I want to find a diamond. And I like this one. I think it's from Wikipedia. So we need to attribute. Where is it from? And this is an important lesson for, to, uh, for kids to have. If this is not your art, you took it from somewhere else, you need to attribute it. And again, we need to define the region. Here, I want to make sure I'm capturing the whole thing. Oh, it might be interesting, actually, to capture just a corner. And double tap, and it's showing up here. And now we can go back and actually write the text. So now we can choose where in all of this we're going to write the text. And you get the point here. And again, you can see that now we're starting to create it. And we can add more and more panels so the poem can become uh, longer. We can, of course, have more text on each uh, panel as well. So it doesn't have to be. I just gave an example that was very short. But you can do more than that. And then you can save it. And it won't let you do it without uh, three panels. So I'll just quickly create the last panel and then save. And now you can see that you can publish it, you can scrap it, or you can polish it. And to polish it, you can actually add title, credits, and everything else to it. It's a great way to get their creative juices going and actually have their writing guided by the art. In a work we've done in research, actually, in an evaluation, we found many times that kids write better poetry and better other texts as well when they start with the creative process and they start with creating the art, whether photography or drawing, and then writing. So uh, it's a great way to use Visual Poet to create something that is very different than the other apps we talked about. So today we talked about some poems and how they can be created with the help of the iPads. And I'm hoping that you will use the excuse of Poetry Month to create a lot of great poems. If you want to share them with us, that'll be fantastic. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.